Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another OpenShift Commons briefing. And today, Krish is back with us. Uh, you've seen him before uh, when we've also talked about Crossplane, uh, and that was a few months back. And Crossplane is has applied for graduation from the CNCF, so that's exciting news as well. And Chris just had a blog post go out that I will send to Chris. For those of you watching on all the OpenShift TV channels, um, you can go open up his blog post as well. And I will let Chris go ahead and introduce himself and talk about, um, well, I will just let you go, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Karina. Um, so yeah, hi everyone. My name's Chris. Uh, today we're going to be uh, talking a little bit about cross-plane providers, um, as well as uh, the recent OLM repackaging effort from from the office of the CTO. Um, so who am I? Uh, first things first. So I'm a software engineer in the Red Hat office of the CTO, uh, more specifically in the uh, emerging technologies team. Uh, I'm also a maintainer on the cross-plane sub-projects for provider AWS and the provider in cluster. Uh, I'm also a SIG storage member and maintainer on some sub-projects. So my Twitter is, is ChrisChow underscore if you want to follow me there. Uh, and my, my GitHub is just ChrisChow. Um, so uh, our agenda at a high level, uh, we're basically going to go over the what, where, when, why, who uh, for cross-plane providers. Uh, as well as then the how for OLM repackaging. Uh, in between there, we're going to go over the main components to help provide some more context for folks who aren't familiar with Crossplane. So let's start with the what. Uh, so, so what is Crossplane? Let's quickly go over the project at a, at a high level. Uh, so the first you know, main pillar for Crossplane is really provisioning, right? Crossplane allows you to provision cloud resources from within your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it also allows you to manage the entire life cycle. So not only creating you know, cloud resources, uh, but also then updating those and you know, eventually deleting them if you need to. Uh, and lastly, the uh, specific providers expose information on these external resources, right? So you can not only create, but also observe these resources and observe their state over time, right? So if something happens to your, your RDS uh, Postgres instance, um, you will be notified on the custom resource through events. Uh, and so from the Crossplane docs, we have that providers are packages that enable Crossplane to provision infrastructure on an external service, right? So again, the main goal of a provider is really to provision things outside of your Kubernetes cluster or your OpenShift cluster. Um, so these providers bring CRDs or managed resources that map one-to-one -one with uh, external infrastructure resources, as well as controllers to uh, manage the life cycle of these resources. So something key to note in that sentence is this notion of mapping you know, one-to-one, -one, uh, of providers really being focused on fidelity for these external resources. Uh, this is going to be a common theme. Uh, but what are providers really, right? Uh, definitions are all well and good, but, but what does it mean? Uh, so providers are similar to operators, right? Uh, but the main difference is that, you know, we're, for operators, we utilize OLM. Uh, for providers, uh, we use the cross-plane provider to handle installation and, and all other management, right? So updating. Uh, removing providers, that's all handled by the, the cross-plane operator. And so providers use a lot of the same tooling as operators, such as queue builder, uh, controller runtime, and controller tools. Uh, for this reason, a lot of folks in the community often consider providers to be an opinionated form of an operator. Uh, but again, the main difference is that providers are designed to reference some external resource, right? So for a developer, the really nice thing is you don't have to worry about our back deployment and, and all the bootstrapping since there already exists a, a lot of tooling for for new developers and, and folks that want to create you know new providers. So the where. So where are providers located? Right? So cross-plane providers are open source 
and you know most will be available on GitHub under the Crossplane or Crossplane Contrib organizations. So some examples we already talked about the provider AWS and provider and cluster. Um, there, there's also you know the provider SQL, which allows you to orchestrate SQL servers uh, by creating users, grants, rules, etc. All your all your favorite SQL resources. Uh, as well as the provider Helm, which allows you to manage and deploy Helm charts using uh, a custom resource. And lastly, the provider AWS that we talked about. But there's also many others that, that are not listed here. Uh, my personal favorite is the provider pizza, which allows you to order pizza from Domino's using, using uh, custom resources. And so they're all available um, under, under the Crossplane orgs. So the when. Um, so when does it make sense to create a provider, right? Uh, when should you create a provider versus when should you use some, some other solution, right? Uh, so it really makes sense to create a provider if you're consuming external resources, right? We've mentioned this before, but if you have some external resource and you want to manage the, the CRUD lifecycle for these resources, a provider is a really good fit. Uh, similarly, there's a really high emphasis on, on high fidelity, right? Uh, really, really important focus. Um, and so you should create a provider if the resources that you want to use are well-defined and granular, right? So it doesn't really make sense to create a provider um, for, for managing abstractions, right? Since that's not the goal. Um, and lastly, um, a special feature in Crossplane is this notion of a composition engine. Uh, and so the best, uh, with an asterisk, the best way to to utilize the composition engine is to create a provider that manages your resources, right? Uh, the reason that there's an asterisk here is uh, it's technically possible to utilize any resource within a composition, uh, but it's really recommended that you only use resources that are exposed by, uh, by a provider. Um, so the why, right? Uh, why should you create or contribute to a provider? Well, so Crossplane is a CNCF sandbox project um, as, as as Karina mentioned, uh, they're applied for graduation, so hopefully they'll be on the next steps in the CNCF yes. soon. Um, yeah, and so all the providers are open source, so anybody can contribute. Um, so this comes with quite a few benefits, right? Not only is there shared development and maintenance of common resources, right? Um, if, if, if there's 10 companies and all of them, you know, want the ability to provision resources on on Azure or IBM Cloud, they, they can all share a common code base to achieve that instead of creating their own you know, bespoke solutions. Um, and for cloud vendors, they can choose to expose their API uh, in Kubernetes through a common interface, right? So this is not only good for the cloud vendors, but also good for users, right? Um, I would prefer a standard interface or, or a common interface at least uh, for creating resources on Azure, GCP, AWS, uh, and, and Crossplane helps to make that possible. Uh, and lastly, there's a very streamlined development and consumption process, right? Crossplane handles a lot of the messy parts, uh, so you know, cluster cluster administrators and developers can 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 get started on doing the work they need to do. Uh, so why might you want to repackage a provider, right? We've talked a lot about the cross-plane design and structure, uh, but why might we want to take a provider and structure it as a standalone operator? Um, so uh, one of the one of the first issues is, is has to do with proxies, right? We'll go into more detail about this shortly. But something that's really integral to the cross-plane operator is pulling an OP uh, an OCI image, right? So the operator itself pulls an image. Um, and so this can cause quite a few issues uh, when there's a cluster that's running behind a proxy. Um, this is not like an uh, unfixable issue, uh, but it's definitely one more thing for uh, administrators to note. Uh, and it's not immediately clear that this is how you know, Crossplane is designed. Um, similar, uh, a similar problem has to do with credentials. Uh, if you're using a private container registry, um, you'll need to supply credentials separately to Crossplane and the kubelet, right? So this can, as you can imagine, this can cause issues with credentials going stale um, or, 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 or diverging between Crossplane and the kubelet. Um, and, and lastly, and I think the most compelling reason has to do with 
resource limitations, right? Or, or, or essentially, you might not always want to install the crossplane operator and allow crossplane to manage, um, you know, the entire life cycle of a provider. Um, you know, with, with, with the OLM repackaging effort, you can choose to only install the providers you need uh, and directly provision resources from those providers. So, uh, for example, I might just want to use uh, the provider AWS to create S3 buckets. Uh, and so I can do that uh, with, with the, with the uh, OLM repackaging, and I don't have to worry about all the other setup for crossplane or, um, or, or if there's any other issues. So, um, who is actually creating and maintaining these providers? Uh, well, there's three main groups from my perspective. Uh, there's folks from the open source community. Uh, so as I mentioned, um, almost all of the providers that I know of at least are open source, and there's many contributors and active members from the community. Uh, there's also uh, contributors from organizations like Upbound, Red Hat, Squiz, and Accenture. And, and lastly, there's, there's engineers from organizations like Alibaba, IBM, AWS, and Equinix that contribute to the development of their respective providers. And so let's get into the components of a provider and OLM operator. So uh, let's do a quick primer again on the provider AWS. So this is one of the most popular cross-plane providers with support for dozens of AWS resources. And for our purposes, it's also a really great example of a provider to, to dissect. Uh, and then from the OLM side, um, we're going to be looking at the memcached operator, which is a common operator that's used in guides and examples, uh, like this one. <laughs> uh, and it's also a great example of the standard structure of an OLM operator. So what are the core components? Right, so let's take a look at the memcached operator. So we can see here, first we have our API folder. This is where we define all of the API resources that this operator exposes. Uh, then we have the controllers directory, uh, which contains all of our uh, controllers and, and reconciler logic uh, for the aforementioned API resources. Uh, and lastly, we have the config and bundle directory. Uh, together, these allow us to describe all the metadata and deployment information for our operator. Uh, and as for uh, provider, um, we have, uh, uh, well, we'll see the structure is pretty similar, right? We have the APIs directory here, which just like the API directory contains all of our, 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 our types that we want to expose. Um, and then we also have our PKG directory, which uh, contains all of our controllers and reconciler. So as you can see at this point, uh, the difference so far is, is, is pretty minimal. Uh, and lastly, or I guess uh, most importantly, is um, we have a combination of, of folders here. We have the package folder, as well as our cluster and build folder. And so together, these three uh, directories uh, kind of handle everything around um, deployment and packaging uh, that we'll get into in a second. Uh, and so at this point, um, I think most people will have noticed that the difference here is mainly semantic, right? Uh, but the last point that we talked about around deployment uh, for providers is, is really key. And we're going to hone into that a little bit more here. So how do I actually then deploy a provider, right? There's no deployment, there's no cluster role, no cluster role binding service account, nothing that I can use that's clear here that I can, that I can deploy it with. Um, so this is, this is something that, that's missing, right? Uh, and so let's take a quick aside on deployment. Uh, so as we mentioned before, within the crossplane model, you have to have the crossplane operator installed already. Uh, and the operator, the crossbin operator, exposes a few different uh, API groups. So namely, the pkg package.crossplane.io uh, group uh, contains a provider resource, a provider custom resource. Uh, and this is one of the most popular ways to install a crossplane provider. All you have to do is define 
the uh, image and tag uh, that you want to provision. So for this example, uh, we're going to use the provider AWS image with the alpha tag. So this is straight from you know the crossplane uh, docs. Uh, one of the other ways to install a provider is through the use of a configuration, right? This is installed the same way as providers, but configurations are designed to expose XRDs or composite resource definitions that we won't get into in this talk. Uh, but that's a that's a whole nother a whole nother topic in itself. Um, but users can install providers through the use of dependencies uh, on this configuration. So we can see uh, within the spec, there's a depends on array uh, where we can define the provider as well as the version, the minimal version that we want to install. Um, and so what is the delta then, right? Uh, essentially, uh, this boils down to where are the missing components related to deploying the provider? So, um, you know, my favorite way to try and figure out uh, something like this is just to start hacking away and, and break things down. So let's actually take a look at what our package contains, right? So with a tool like Undocker, we can actually browse through the contents of our image uh, without digging through the entire build process, right? I personally, uh, would rather look at the end result than uh, take a look at every step of, of, of the build process and, and dig through a make file. Um, so let, let's pull our, our image with the uh, 0.18.1 tag. Um, we'll run on Docker, which allows us to unpack the image layer by layer. Uh, and then we can see that uh, within this directory, uh, the, only, the only file is a package.yaml file in the root of the image. This is interesting, right? Um, there's no controller. There's there's nothing nothing here that stands out. It's just a YAML file. So uh, if we take a look within this YAML file, um, it starts off with a long list of the CRDs that this provider exposes, uh, and then all the way at the bottom, in the last you know 143 lines, uh, we'll see there's a meta dot package dot crossplane uh, resource here. Uh, and at the bottom of that, we have within our spec uh, an image referenced here, um, which is the provider AWS controller. Right? So this is the actual controller that uh, we'll be using. Um, and, and everything inside of the package.yaml is basically just metadata and CRDs that we have to create. Um, so let's, so what's the rest of the puzzle then? Right? So based on this, we can deduce that there's two separate steps here, right? There's our actual metadata image, right? Which is the provider AWS. And then there's the actual controller, which is the provider AWS dash controller. Um, and so it turns out, uh, if we dig through the crossplane operator code, um, that the operator parses the package.yaml, uh, installs all the CRDs, uh, and configures the RBAC for the provider at runtime, right? So it parses all the CRDs uh, and creates our service account, our cluster role, cluster role binding. All of that happens at runtime when we try to install the operator or when we try to install the, the provider. And so for brevity here, uh, we're not going to go over the cross clean operator code base in detail, uh, but there is a link in these slides if anyone is interested in digging around there. Uh, and so at the end, the operator, uh, the Craftsman operator, creates our deployment uh, using the tag uh, referenced in the spec.controller.image within our package.yaml document. Um, and so this is where uh, that aforementioned issue we talked about a little while ago around proxies comes, right? So if the main Crossplane operator is pulling an image, uh, we have to make sure that it not only has the appropriate credentials, but then it can also even access the container registry we're using. Um, and so this is kind of the, the crux of, of that issue. And so this is notable, right? Because OLM opts to define all of our RBAC and deployment at build time, uh, whereas Crossplane opts to do it at runtime. So let's get into the actual process of, of OLM repackaging then. 
So um, there is a project or repository that we can use to, to help out with this process. Um, namely, there's the OLM repackage repository within the Red Hat ET uh, GitHub org. And so if we clone the OLM repackage repository and examine the contents, we'll see quite a few files here that we're going to be using. So from the top, we have the Docker file and make file that we're using. So the Docker file just contains uh, everything required for building the controller itself. Uh, and the make file uh, just has uh, all the targets we need to actually uh, build our operator and build our bundle that we'll see in a little bit. We also then have our project.boilerplate.txt file. And so this just contains uh, some boilerplate for our project file. Uh, this is used by the gen project script here at the bottom. Uh, and so this project file just contains a lot of metadata about our operator. Uh, lastly, or I guess we also have the config directory. So as you can see, this has quite a few subfolders, the contents of which has been omitted. Uh, but we know that the CRD directory contains all of our generated CRDs. Uh, the manager contains our deployment. Uh, manifests defines uh, what our CSV, our cluster service version, looks like. Uh, and lastly, uh, within the RBAC directory, we have all of our generated RBAC manifests, um, which is related to the gen RBAC script. So this script will create an RBAC.go file, which contains uh, all of our cube builder annotations uh, that are used to generate the RBAC during the build process. So, um, we use quite a few different tools during the repackaging process as well. Namely, we use YQ, which is a tool for querying different fields within our YAML document. The operator SDK CLI tool, which is used to handle generation and validation for deployment manifests. And lastly, the we use Customize and Controller Gen. So the, the former uh, of YQ and Operator SDK must be installed manually uh, prior to repackaging, and the latter two, uh, Customize and Controller Gen, are both uh, automatically installed by targets in our make file. So not pictured here uh, is Golang and uh, Docker or Podman. Uh, Golang, of course, you need for um, you know, actually compiling code uh, and running, you know, different generation. And uh, Docker and Podman are needed, of course, to build and push up the image. So what is each process then uh, of repackaging? So part one is all the setup steps, right? So you have to clone your target repository. Uh, in this example, we're going to be using the provider AWS. Then we're going to set up all of our dependencies. Right? So this was everything that we saw on the previous slide. Uh, and we also have to make sure that we have credentials and access from those credentials set up for a container registry like key.io that we're going to use here. Uh, and lastly, you have to clone the OLM repackage repository. And then copy the contents from the OLM repackage, re repackage uh, directory into the contents of the root of the provider. If that doesn't make sense, we're going to go over an example now. So uh, in this example, we're going to clone the provider AWS, as mentioned before. Uh, and so we're just going to be using the, the master tag so we can get all the most recent changes. Uh, and then we're going to CD into our provider AWS uh, and clone our OLM repackage repository. So my preferred way to do this is just to create a hidden folder. I like to use .work. Uh, and so once that's done, we can just recursively copy the contents, right? So this will override our provider make file as well as bring the config directory as well as our Docker file. So now we just have to set some environment variables uh, more specifically, our uh, container registry user or organization, as well as the operator image that we're using. So under you know our org, we're going to use the provider AWS tag and or the provider AWS image, 
and the master tag. So now we can just run uh, docker build and docker push with our new image. So within our makefile now, we're going to pull uh, controller tools and controller gen, uh, generate all of our, or co-gen all of our files that we need. Um, and in one second, uh, we're going to generate all of our CRDs. Uh, the next step is uh, running the gen rbac script, uh, which generates our rbac.go. So the actual contents of this go file is uh, a bunch of annotations, basically. Um, within, our, within this file, we have comments, uh, which describe what the rbac needs to look like. Uh, and then we'll just quickly build the, the image. So for me, that was all cached, but uh, if you're building this yourself, it might take a second. Uh, and so we've gone through the build process for the operator. We've added all of our uh, environment variables, run the code gen and push it up to our container registry. Uh, and the last step of the build process is actually creating our bundle, right? Although we've created our operator and that's been pushed up, um, we still have to create the bundle. Uh, and this bundle create contains all of our manifests and metadata. Uh, and this is put into a single package that's installed by the Operator Lifecycle Manager, or OLM. So now uh, we can start the process of building our bundle. So we're just going to have to set all of our um, environment variables again. So again, with the image, uh, the user, the repository, and the tag that we're using. We're just going to set the uh, Operator image again as well. Uh, and now we can run the gen project script, right? So this just defines, as I said before, our project file, which contains a bunch of metadata about our operator, right? Although this isn't strictly required, uh, this helps to provide uh, more detailed information for folks that are trying to install our operator. This will finish in just a second. Good chance for me to grab some water. <laughs> yeah, so there we go, that's done. Uh, and now we're just gonna run a few commands here to template in some values um, into our config directory. Of course, we can manually go through this, but uh, it's easier to just to just run a command here. Uh, and now we're going to uh, rename our cluster service version .yaml to include uh, the name of this operator, right? So we chose to name our operator provider AWS. Um, so we're just going to make that change. And now we can actually create our bundle. So this again runs all of our uh, code generation for our CRDs. Uh, as well as generating our RBAC again. So this will take another second. Uh, and so just to talk about something we did uh, kind of behind the scenes. So when we templated in all these values into our, our config directory, uh, this just updates a bunch of references and, and metadata. So our bundle has been created now. We get some warnings here, but, but no issues, luckily. <laughs> um, and now we can set our bundle image, which is the uh, image reference for what our bundle is called. So I like to follow the convention of image uh, dash bundle, basically. So this will effectively just be called provider AWS dash bundle. And it'll have the same tag as the provider AWS. So now we can just build our bundle, uh, which is a, just a Docker file. Uh, and this should happen pretty quickly since we're just copying a bunch of files around. Uh, and now we can push that up. Okay, perfect. So now let's actually run the thing. 
right? Let's run the provider AWS operator. Um, so again, here we're gonna set our bundle image. Uh, and now uh, we can use the operator SDK to run the bundle. So this is not the way to run the bundle in production, but for our purposes here, uh, this, this, should, this should work. And so the operator SDK will start the process of creating our catalog source, our operator group and subscription. So these are the main resources required to not only create a new uh, operator within uh, OpenShift, but also it allows us to create our operator group, which defines namespaces that we can target, as well as the subscription, which actually requests uh, the operator to be created. Uh, and so now uh, we're just waiting on the cluster service version to be created. Uh, we'll see that that's pending, now it's installing, and it succeeded. And so just like that, we now have our operator running. So we can check to see that all of our CRDs are defined here. Uh, with all of our AWS resources. So now we can get started with creating, you know, uh, an S3, S3 bucket or RDS database or anything we want. So that's all for this presentation. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, uh, my LinkedIn and Twitter are here if you want to connect or, or chat. Or feel free to ping me on Slack. Uh, I'm on the Kubernetes Slack as, as Krish or uh, the Crossbind Slack as, as Krish as well, I believe. Are there, are there any, any questions? Thanks, Chris. Uh, hey, Chris, do you see any questions in Twitch? All right, we do have a question. Why is the repackaging necessary? Yeah, so let's, let's go back a, a few slides here. Um, There we go. Um, so there's a few there's a few reasons why you might want to repackage a provider, right? Uh, if you're looking to get started off the ground as quickly as possible, uh, it might not be the right fit. Um, from my perspective, one of the main benefits of repackaging a provider is um, you can choose to just install the providers you need and directly provision resources from those providers uh, while building your own abstractions on top of them. Right, uh, you might not necessarily want to utilize the crossplane operator or composition engine. Um, you could achieve something similar with, let's say, Helm, for example. Uh, so that's one reason. Um, aside from that, the, the first two issues here, um, you can either work around these issues, uh, and I believe there's also fixes uh, that are in active development to kind of handle these. So for example, uh, one use case that I can talk about uh, myself is uh, another another project that I contribute to um, is the uh, container object storage interface project under the SIG storage. Uh, and so for that project, um, we essentially are trying to create uh, drivers or provisioners for object storage vendors, right? So we could use uh, the provider AWS operator uh, as a driver for the uh, COSI, process, COSI project, right? And that makes things easier for folks that uh, wanna get started since they just need to install the provider AWS operator instead of you know, having to install the crossplane operator and, and handle everything through, through, the, through that operator. Yeah, <clears throat> and I guess, I mean, if you're strictly an OLM type shop just running operators, um, you may not want to have another layer of abstraction from you know cross playing where you can just kind of repackage it and plug it in um, to work with all of your existing OLM workflows that you've already established. So um, I do have another question, Krish, that I don't know if it was clear to everyone, but um, <clears throat> so will this repackaging, like the package, the repackage repo work with any of the cross playing providers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, not only will the OLM repackage repository work with any of the cross-plane providers out there, um, 
There's also uh, an automated version of this process. So what I showed today was kind of the manual way to go about it, but under the Red Hat ET org, there is a GitHub action that can be used uh, to kind of automate every step of this process and, and repackage a provider for you and push it to you know a target registry. Um, so that GitHub action basically goes through the exact same workflow here, uh, except you know it can be automated and applied to, to any operator. So let's say you know you always want to use the most latest version of the provider GCP. Uh, you could set up uh, that uh, action to run on a schedule, let's say once a day, you know at at, at 12 a.m. Uh, and it can you know repackage the most recent version of the provider GCP and push it up to you know your favorite container registry. So Chris, I have, I have one more question for you. Um, and it's a leading one. Does this uh, cross-plane operator, have you tested it up um, with OKD yet? Yes, so um, uh, we've primarily been using um, OpenShift, uh, but we, we haven't directly tried it with, with upstream OKD yet. I will see uh, but if, if, you, if you wanted to use you know, uh, OKD directly or Kubernetes, vanilla Kubernetes, um, all you need to do is install the OLM operator um, and then you can get started so that, that you're able to achieve that pretty quickly. Okay. So it's not limited just to OpenShift OCP? Yes. Perfect. And Chris, you've been working mostly with the AWS um, provisioner, right? And you're the main mm -hmm. maintainer for that provisioner. Is that correct? Uh, I, I would say I'm one of the maintainers. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm the, the main maintainer. Yeah, but I've been uh, contributing uh, to the upstream provider uh, AWS for, for for quite a while now. I I was mentioning that because I was wondering if you had any tips as your as anybody else is looking to help write the providers. What are some things that you've run into? Some gotchas? Some tips that you'd like to share? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, from my experience, I think uh, the biggest tip that I could have for someone that's looking to get started with contributing to um, either the cross-plane operator itself or any of the providers, um, I'd say the biggest thing is just to uh, reach out and, and talk to people. Um, so the, the cross-plane communities is, I think, one of, one of the best uh, open source communities out there. Uh, folks are always willing to help out and answer questions. Uh, and there's community meetings that run, I believe, every Thursday now. Um, so that's always a really great place to start, uh, just to talk to people and get a sense uh, of, of what there is to work on. Uh, and more generally, if you're looking to contribute to an open source project, um, I think cross-plane providers are a great place to start. Um, not only is it a good chance to you know, learn the fundamentals of contributing to an open source project, um, and also, you know, everything about Kubernetes and Go. Um, it's also a good chance to learn about, you know, some a cloud provider, right? You might want to learn about GCP or AWS or Azure, and you can use, um, you know, your experience from writing a, you know, GCP provider or resources in the GCP provider uh, to kind of learn uh, more in-depth information about uh, Google, Google Cloud itself. Um, in terms of gotchas, uh, I think the biggest thing is just uh, staying up to date. Uh, the Crossplane project is uh, still, I guess, uh, it's, it's, it's more stable now, uh, but when I started contributing, the project was definitely still uh, in, in the earlier stages, uh, and so there would be, you know, breaking changes once in a while, and it would be important to stay up to date. But uh, now that the project has, you know, matured quite a bit, um, I think the API is pretty, pretty stable these days. Thank you. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. Yes. I'd love to see different repackaging scenarios and you know using OKD as a a playground for that. Um, mm -hmm. I think that I'll take that to the OKD working group that's kicking off in about 30 minutes. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can get some testing done um, from the OKD working group on this and and give you some feedback there as well. So um, and that should be able to find a blog post if we get that done on okd.io sometime 
in the not too distant future. So um, yeah, again, really great work. Uh, it's wonderful to see um, the use of OLM and operators um, to repackage this. And um, I'm looking forward to getting some feedback on this and um, watching the journey that Crossplane takes um, in the CNCF too, in the not too distant future. So. Yeah. My, my only critique, Chris, would be we should have used provider pizza because it's lunchtime. <laughs> use it. Yeah. <laughs> you can get everybody a, a slice of pizza. <laughs> yeah. It's lunchtime somewhere. Here we're still drinking right, coffee right. on the West Coast. <laughs> uh, that's good. So, yeah, Scott and, and, and Chris, really, this is the great work that you guys have been doing. And I'm looking forward to seeing a few more providers out there. So um, we'll, we'll get those tested and... and Give you feedback from the OKD and other arenas, and uh, Karina, as always, thank you for for organizing this and making this happen. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks again, Chris. And right. Chris, if there aren't any other questions, can you please see us out? Then thanks again, Chris. This is awesome. Always love having you on. Thank you, Karina. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Take care. Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. Yes.